The Columbia Broadcasting System presents Mickey Rooney as Shorty Bell. From Hollywood, we bring you Shorty Bell, a novel for radio. The story of a young newspaper reporter in a big city, starring Mickey Rooney. When I first got into the newspaper business, I didn't know a comma from an apostrophe. Don Robard, my managing editor, said he was hiring me for my curiosity and my brass, not for my writing ability. But, of course, a reporter wouldn't be a reporter unless he wanted to write that great American novel, so naturally I got the bug. And just when I began to think my night school course was paying off, Mr. Robard called me into his office. Mr. Bell, did you write this obituary? I see, uh, Professor Paul F. Andrews, dean of the English department at State University, died last night. Yeah, yeah, I wrote this. Why? You misspelled three words and made five grammatical errors. It would have been much better, Mr. Bell, if you had died and the professor had written your obituary. (laughs) I'm pasting this specimen of your matchless prose on the bulletin board in the city room as a horrible example. Oh, no, wait a minute, Chief. Don't do anything like that. The fellows are all going to laugh at me. When you've learned to write, I'll take it down. I can write. Maybe it'd surprise you to know that I've already written a short story. Mm, Indeed. Yes, indeed. When I sell it, maybe you'll eat your words about my not knowing how to write. (laughs) Ha! (laughs) Ha, ha, ha! Go ahead and laugh. The story's already in Seymour Fowler's hands. How do you like that? Seymour Fowler, eh? That flesh peddler. Mr. Fowler happens to be an artist representative who knows all the publishers in New York and all the movie producers in Hollywood. How much would you say your story is worth, Mr. Bell? How much? Well, it's it's worth a lot. Might even sell it to the movies. Yeah. Get as much as maybe a thousand bucks. Oh, only a thousand. Maybe five thousand. I'd say it's worth five thousand. And when did you write this little masterpiece? Days when things weren't so hectic around here. I don't let grass grow under my feet, you know. <laughs> Not me. You wrote it on company time, eh, Mr. Bell? Oh, well, you... Yes, you could say that. <laughs> I, I do say it, Mr. Bell. You realize, of course, that this story you wrote does not belong to you. Doesn't belong to me, but of course and it And that you had no legal right to give it to Mr. Seymour Fowler. Having been written on company time, Mr. Bell, it belongs to this newspaper. Bring it to me, Mr. Bell. I want it. I told you I gave it to Seymour Fowler. Oh, very well. I'm not an unreasonable man, Mr. Bell. Instead of the story, I'll be satisfied with the price you yourself placed upon it. Just put the 5000 on the desk and we'll say no more of this matter. Just put the five... Where would I get $5,000? Then fetch the story from Seymour Fowler. Look, Chief, it's only a teensy weensy little story. Either bring it to me, Mr. Bell, or bring me $5,000, or go to the cashier's window and draw your severance pay. You know, if you didn't spend so much time composing the great American novel, perhaps you'd write better obituaries. I know of one obituary I'd really put my heart and soul into. That'll be all, Mr. Bell. Good morning. Again. Well, how are you, Mr. Fowler? Busy. Huh? Got a minute to spare. Oh, but I came... Sorry, I can't give you any more time today, but keep in touch. I'm always doing something. Well, I, I, I have to talk to you about that story. Story, I... story. What story is that, Mr. Uh... Uh, Bell, Mr. Fowler? Oh, yeah. Well, it's this way, Mr. Bill. No, no. It's uh, The name is Bell. Bell. Oh, of course. Bell, Bell. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to be so formal, and I want you to call me Seymour, Bell, Bell. No, no, no. Look, look, my... <laughs> Wait a minute, will you? My... Bell. Shorty Bell. Shorty... Yeah. Say, don't I know you? Of course. Yeah, yeah, you gave me a story. Uh, let me say, don't tell me. What was its name again? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, Mr. Fowler, I like... watch. Yeah, yeah, sit down, Bell Bell. Hey, have I got news for you? Yeah, you stand up. Have I got news for you? Listen to this. Hey, I was reading your story last week. Yeah. Uh, what's it called again? The Dog Watch. Yeah, the Dog Watch. That's the one. You know, you know something you're going to believe me? What? It brought tears to my eyes. It did? Yeah. <laughs> you don't believe me? There's the phone. Call up my wife and ask her. I read it loud, and we both sat there and cried like babies. Well, Mr. Fowler, I, uh, I wrote it as a comedy. Yeah, that's swell. <laughs> Listen to what happened. So as soon as I finished the story, I pick up the phone personally, and I called Al Delaney at Worldwide Studios out in Hollywood. Al Delaney, you did? My story? No Bell, kidding. Bell, Bell, I don't waste time. Oh, that's wonderful. Al, I says to him, I happen to be handling just about the greatest dog story ever written. So then I tell him the dog story. Story. Wait a minute, yeah. dog story? That's what he said. I, I, I didn't write any dog story. Yeah. My story is about the newspaper business. Yeah, that's what I said. So then we talked price. And... <laughs> newspaper business? Yeah. 
You mean the dog watches about newspapers? Yeah, that's right. Not dogs? No. Not Bow Wow? Not... No, I, I, I thought you said you read it. Well, yeah, I, I, I read the title. Uh... <laughs> Holy smoke, they'll ruin me. Who's going to ruin you? Worldwide Studios. Already, Al Delaney sent me 500 bucks option money. And he wants your story as a starring vehicle for Poogie. Who's Poogie? <laughs> Who's Poogie? Who's... Poogie's Poogie! You've seen his movies? Poogie runs away. Poogie comes home. My dog, Poogie. <laughs> my, my story? A, a movie for a dog? A dog. He's not a dog. He's a star. I only wish I had his money. Oh, uh, my, my, my story, a movie for a dog. I can't I, believe wait it. Wait a minute. What are you? Anti-canine? <laughs> <laughs> you are a cat lover? Oh, they like that. Shut up and let me think. All right, let me see. Now, what happens in your story? Look, at, uh, it's about a couple of newspaper guys who sit around the newspaper office during the dog watch. And see? murders in it. No, no. A chase, maybe. No. Maybe a gorilla with a human brain. You know, something refreshing. No, no. <laughs> How do you like that? Just when everything was clicking. Here, read the telegram Al sent me. Uh, Poogie arrives your city Tuesday. That's today. For two weeks of personal appearances. Have author study Poogie's personality. Me? I'm supposed to study a dog's personality? Oh, sure. So you can adapt the story to his talents. Bell, Bell, look, no, baby, no, listen. Wait a minute. No, wait, wait a second. No, I got an idea. No, wait a I got an idea. Will you listen? All right. All Delaney wants is an adoption, maybe ten pages. Adaption. adaption. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. So, <laughs> if you write an original story for Pookie, yeah. I could tell Al it's the adoption. What do you say? It's the least you can do after getting me in such a jam. I got you into a jam? I got you, you got me. What's the difference? Look at it. What do you say? What do you say? It's no use, Seymour. That's what I came here to tell you. The story doesn't belong to me. I wrote it on company time, so it belongs to my newspaper. I'm going to have to take it out of your hands, I'm What's afraid. the matter? You're crazy or something? It is out of my hands. It's out of your hands, too. Delaney has an option on it. I can't get it back. Seymour, look, you got to. Either I turn the story over to my boss or I got to give him 5,000 bucks. Otherwise, you're going to lose my job. You're shouting, Bell Bell. <laughs> No, sweet, sweetie, sweetie, look. sweetie, look. Oh, wait do, a minute. Do, do, right. do like I asked yeah. you. Write the adoption. Adoption. Yeah, write it. All right, whatever it is. I may be able to get five thousand. <laughs> Believe me. That's all. I leave it later. I can get five thousand. All right, okay, that's very funny. I can't spell. Go ahead. Bye. I'm a fool, but I'm a writer. Oh, right, look. Wait. Maybe I can get five thousand for it, then you'll be clear. But I... I have never written a dog story. You've never written a dog? Look, it's easy. Look. All right, now try to picture this. You see, now here's what happened. Yeah. Poogie does something, mm -hmm. and then so on and so on. Mm -hmm. Then he does something else, and then so on and so on. All right, yeah. But wait, wait a second. Here's the payoff. Here's the payoff. Just when everything looks darkest, he does something else. <laughs> and, then, and then to finish it off, it all ends up happy. You see what I mean? But, uh, but tell me, just what is it uh, he does? What does he do? Look, Bell Bell, baby, you're the writer. I'm only the agent. <laughs> Gee. Imagine a dog living in a hotel like this. Will you stop calling Poogie a dog? How much did you make last year? Me? Uh, I made about 2,000 bucks. You made 2,000. Poogie made 100,000. You have the nerve to refer to him as a dog. Uh, now, remember, whatever you do, don't make no passes at Jenny Ames. Jenny Ames? She's the girl who owns Poogie. Oh. She got an uncle named Toby who's always afraid Jenny will get married and have to go back to work. I don't blame him either. You know what the market is these days for Mahjong instructors? <laughs> no, uh, no passes at Jenny Ames. Check. Okay. Yeah? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, hello, Toby. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Hello, Seymour. Who's this guy? Toby, meet Bell Bell Billings. Billings. Bell Bell's the fellow who wrote the story Delaney wants for Poogie. Oh, yeah? Great story. Like everything I've heard about him, especially the part where he's kidnapped by gypsies. Poogie likes it, too. Poogie likes it? Poogie? Yeah, he loves scripts, especially with green covers. Likes to chew on them. Went through a whole set of Mark Twain last month. <laughs> Me, I don't know one book from another. By the way, are you married, Billingsby? Hmm? Why, no, I used to go with a girl before the war. We weren't exactly engaged. I but... want you to promise me something, Billingsby. What? Promise me you'll marry that girl. I, 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 I don't see how I can promise you that. I just... Sure, he promises, Toby. You know, cat, I... Bell, Bell. Toby, tonight he'll call her up. You'll be standing there listening. He'll name the date. How's that? But, 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 I 
But, but we're wasting time. Is that what you want to say, Belle Belle? No, 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 no. I No, no, no. No one gets ahead just standing around talking. That's what you mean. Right you are, Belle Belle. Uh, Toby, the kid's just dying to make Pookie's acquaintance. Well, Pookie's taking a voice lesson right now. <laughs> Pookie is taking a... He takes voice lessons? Yeah, for his radio show, you know. He's on the radio. Yeah, yeah. Hm. Look, don't you think it's a little silly for a dog to have silly? a radio? What's silly about it? Boogie wasn't always in pictures. That's where he got his start in radio. Oh, oh, oh. Be here. I'll be right back. Look, there's no gypsies in my story. And, and why did you tell him I was going to get married? What right I have you got you, to I tell him? I told you, I told you. You don't like bachelors. I am not going to get married. Okay, okay. Tell you what. We'll tell him you had a change of heart and decided to enter a monastery. We'll tell him the truth. Five thousand dollars, Bell Bell. The truth. Five thousand. The five. Which monastery? <laughs> I trust we ain't interrupting anything. Oh, Pookie likes an audience. In here. Ma non c'è tu vuoi l'abbassamento di cato per tardi. All right, so we're going to try it again. A deep breath. Are you ready? Me, 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 me. Oh, oh son of a... <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Toby. Pookie's a singer beautiful, eh? All right, Pookie, once some more. You ready? Me, 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 me. Oh. That's a fine, a grand of a man. That's a beautiful. <laughs> All right, but the lesson is she's finished. Now we're going to rest. Hey, that was beautiful, wasn't it, Bell Bell? Bell Bell, come out of that trance. Uh, never, never in my life have I ever seen anything. Bell Bell, like this is Pookie. Bell Bell. <laughs> oh, the... And this uh, is his voice teacher, uh, Professor Peanut. How are you, Jack? Uh, Scrap... Scratch his ears, Mr. Bell Bell. He likes it. Huh? Go ahead, scratch his ears. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Please, not to my ears, the boogie ears. <laughs> Jimmy, make Boogie say hello to Mr. Bilbo. Say hello, Boogie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 get him, get him off of me. He's crushing me. He likes He's crushing you. me. He wants to lick your face. Go ahead, Bilbo, let him lick your face. Go ahead. <laughs> Who's already engaged to a mighty fine girl. Yeah, already. Uh, hello, honey. How are you? Just wonderful. I haven't read your story, but the studio told me about it, and I think it's just wonderful. You know, <laughs> making Poogie the leader of the St. Bernard's up there in the Alps is a wonderful idea. Just wonderful. Shouldn't Poogie be lying down before dinner, Jenny? Uh-huh. Say bon voyage, Poogie. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> Go get out. I'll see you later. See Jim. you all at dinner. <laughs> Wonderful. I want to have a word with you, Seymour. Sure, sure, Toby. You know, I was thinking, maybe Belle Belle can write in a scene where Poogie sits on street corners to raise dough so this gypsy kid can have an outfit. What gypsy kid? There's no gypsy guy in my story. Excuse me, please, sir. Are you sure to your Belle? No, my name's Bilbo. I mean, <laughs> it's Belle. Belle, yeah, that's it, Belle. Shorty Bell, that's my name, Bell. I said that. That's yeah, good. That's good. Look, come in east on a train. I read your story. You did? Uh-huh. You mean that you, you actually read it? Oh, not so loud. What's the matter? Are you crazy? Well, what's the matter? In this business, you must always give it the impression that you're so busy, you've not got a time for anything else. Oh. They ever learn that you read a book, so they mock you lousy. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> oh, well, thanks for telling me you read it anyway. That's all right. Is here no witnesses? I can always deny it. Uh, don't worry. Your secret's safe with me, chum. I'm not going to be in this business very long. That's a foolish. You're telling me something. You got an ambition in a life? Yeah, yeah, sure, I have an ambition. I, uh, I want to be a writer. What's well, good? I got an ambition, too. That's why I stay in this business. Hmm? I, I, I don't understand. Well, you. you make a quick dollar. Yeah. Then you quit with enough to realize your ambition. That's what I've been doing now. They think they're using me, yeah. but all the time I'm using them. You should do the same thing. Well, uh, tell me, uh, Professor, how long have you been in the picture business? Oh, not too long. Just since they made the first Jolson story. The Jolson story, you mean uh, Larry Parks? No, uh, Jolson. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, what exactly is your ambition? Oh, it's a beautiful ambition. I'm going to take this money when I make it, you see? Yeah. I'm going to take this money, and I'm going to... Uh, uh, this money, you see? Yeah, I yeah. Take it, and I'm... I'm, it's, uh, I'm, I'm that's a funny thing. Why? It's on the tip of my tongue, but I'm not going to remember. <laughs> Bell, 
have you brought me the manuscript from Seymour Fowler, or did you get the $5,000? Neither, Mr. Robart. I have... How long do you expect me to wait? Just till I figure out a way to get a gypsy boy lost in the Alps. You're going to get a... What? Mr. Robart, don't you think you're sort of pushing me around? You know, I, I could have a steady job in the movies. Movies, yeah. eh? So, you think you'd prefer to exchange your press card for a diamond-studded dog collar, do you? Dog collar? Well, go right ahead, Mr. Bell. Hollywood's loss will be our gain. No, 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 Chief, I didn't mean that. Oh, but I... I did. No reporter threatens me with talk of movies. Okay, Mr. Robot, if that's the way you feel, you'll be sorry. Wait and see. Mr. Bell. Yeah, what do you want? My regards to Sam Goldwyn, Louis Mayer, the Warner Brothers, and Trigger. Oh! <laughs> Sit down, sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Um, where is everybody? Jenny's out with Poogie. Went down to get a magazine to chew on. Yeah. And uh, Toby's over at the theater counting the take. Yeah, I'm glad you dropped over. You know what? El Delaney's going to call us this afternoon. He'll want to know how you're doing on the adoption. How's it coming along, Belle Bell? Uh, not so good. I, I just don't seem to know what to write about. I... Oh, that's the craziest reason for not writing I ever heard. Belle Bell, baby, look. Listen to me. Your approach to this problem is childish. you got to grow up, you know what I mean? I want you to mature. Try to get sort of distinguished gray at the temple. If I don't know what to write about, I don't know what to write about, and that's all there is to it. Baby, listen to me. Listen to me, will you? If they didn't make movies till they had something to make movies about, it would leave people sitting in theaters just eating popcorn. <laughs> See what I mean? Well, well, what should the story be like? And, and don't tell me Pookie does something and so on and so on. What's it oh, about? Oh, you like that approach, huh? No. Well, it is sort of old chapeau. Wait, wait a second, kid. I got it. I got it. Your worries are over. Tell me, tell me. What is it? We change it. We pull the old switcheroo. What's that? Now, try to comprehend this. Yeah. Instead of Pookie does something and so on and so on and yeah. so on. Yeah. Poogie doesn't do something, and so on, and so on, and so on. Ah, uh, that's, that's great. That's wonderful. Do you really think so? Uh, that, okay. Uh, uh, hello, Jenny. How are you? Oh, wonderful. Just wonderful. Poogie, here's your magazine. Now, just sit down and enjoy yourself. I bought him a copy of mine. He likes to look at pictures while he chews. How's the story coming, Bobo? We were just discussing it. Did you give it a happy ending? It has to have one, you know. She's right. All movies do. I think the Motion Picture Production Code says they have to. Motion Picture Production Code? What's that? Well, it's a code for making movies. It tells you what you're allowed to put in and what you're not allowed to put in. Yeah, it's this way. A long time ago, all the producers had a conference. Lasted for days. Smoke-filled rooms and all that. They came to a conclusion that evil was wrong and good was right. Then they put it in code. I... I... <laughs> Put it in code. I still don't understand. What, what sort of code? Well, take it for instance. Crime don't pay. It's okay to show an evildoer having a fine time on his loot, but when it comes to the end of his life, he must die. You understand? Crime don't pay. <laughs> and it tells about love. It tells what about love? Well, you have to be careful with love scenes. Otherwise, you arouse morbid curiosity on the part of the audience. <laughs> morbid curiosity? Look, Bobo, put your arms around me and I'll show you. Uh, oh, well, wait a minute. Come I... on, come on. No, uh... There. Uh, now, the code says you can't have a kiss like this. See? No. No, not quite. Simple. Uh, it lasted too long. But a kiss like this is all right. Jenny, uh, uh, what are you doing uh, with Jenny? Uh, oh. Bell, Bell, give me an equivocal answer, uh, quick. Uh, Uncle Toby, I, I know you what you must be thinking, but I swear we were just... Out! Out! I'll take him out before I throw him out. Please listen to me, and will I you, Uncle won't Toby? Let Poogie make the dog watch either. I'll tell Delaney when he calls. Seymour, please do something. I gave up my job for this guy. I'll get it. I'll get it. Hello. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello, Al. It's Al. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is Seymour Fowler. Yeah, it's Al Delaney. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, just a second, Toby. What, what, what'd you say, Al? Yeah, the story. Oh, it's terrific, terrific, Al. Yeah, stop worrying. Yeah, yeah, I know you have a large investment in Poogie. He's a valuable property. But this writer of mine is sensational. He's got the spark, you know what I mean? Let me talk to him. Oh, Uncle Toby, be careful with yeah. your cigar. Yeah, the story's got everything out. What? What's it about? Hold on a second. Here, Bell Bell, you better talk uh, to but him. Me? Yeah, he wants to know what the story's about. Talk to him. But, but, but what, what do I say? I don't know. Well, uh, say something literary. But, uh, hello, Mr. Delaney. Yeah, the, the, the story? Well, uh... Uh, well, well, well uh, Poogie does something and uh, so on and so on, and then he does something else and so on and so on. And That's enough, Bell Bell. Uh, hello, Al. Yeah. 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 Did you hear what he said? Yeah, wasn't that gorgeous? <laughs> Hurry up. Who's yeah, paying yeah. for this call? Oh. Yeah, this kid's an intellectual. Yeah. I spotted it the first minute him and me crossed swords. Well, you let me talk to him. Oh, Uncle Toby, the ashes from your cigar. You just set Boogie's magazine on fire. Never mind. I'll put it out. <laughs> yeah, what, what'd you say, Al? Talk a little louder. Yeah, there's some commotion going on here. Yeah. My boy just saved Boogie's life. That's all. Shut right? up. Nothing. Just went up in flames. <laughs> Al, Al, don't get excited. Shut up. Sounds like Al's having a stroke. Yeah, yeah. Poogie's okay. My boy saved his life, that's all. What? 
Publicity. Yeah, yeah. That's sensational, Al. Sensational. Okay, I'll set it up at this end. So long. I wanted to talk to him. I want him to fire this... You're wasting speech. your time, Toby. Bell Bell here is now the white-haired boy. I, 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 I'm what? Delaney's flying here with Carlotta Weems. She's going to make a special broadcast from this city. A tribute to Bell Bell Billings. Tribute to me? What did I do? I... Nothing. But Al thinks you saved Poogie's life. I wonder what gave him that impression. <laughs> Testing. One, two, three, whoop. Okay for level? Yeah, that's okay, Bob. Now, do you all know what to do? Any questions with the belt one? No, I, I, I have it straight, Mr. Robson, but I'd like you to get one thing straight. The name is Bell, not Beltmore. Good, I understand, Mr. Beltmore. How about you and Poogie, Miss Ames? Oh, don't worry about Poogie. He's going to be just wonderful. All right, quiet, please, quiet. Stand by. <coughs> Ten seconds. <coughs> Eight. <coughs> Five. The makers of Crelo presents the most beloved of Hollywood reporters, Carlotta Weems. Use Crelo every single day, cause Crelo creels the Crelo way. Other Crelos creel too slow, so ask for K-R-E-L-O, Crelo. Remember... Crelo melts in your hands. <laughs> and now, Carlotta covers the cinema for Crelo. Carlotta Weems. Exclusive! <laughs> Despite the rumors you heard, Washington Irving will not write the screenplay for his story, Rip Van Winkle, and for a very good reason. Get well soon, Washington. <laughs> and now for my feature of the week. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we pay tribute to the young man who saved Poogie's life. His name, now known throughout the world, is Bobo Biltmore. And he's sitting here along with Poogie, Poogie's owner, Miss Jenny Ames, and Mr. Al Delaney, <laughs> the producer of Poogie's pictures. Won't you say a few words, Bobo? I did what any right... No, Mary... What further back? Uh... Um, and his name is known throughout the world, Bobo Biltmore. Oh, I mean, I mean, I, I did it. What any right-thinking American w would have done, I, in in my place, I assure you, Miss Ames and Mr. Delaney, I was only trying to live uh, up to Poogie's <laughs> own high standard of conduct. That's all I I was trying to do, Mr. Delaney, Rini, Nanny. <laughs> you are far too modest, Bobo. Bobo. <laughs> Agree with me, Miss Ames. Oh, uh, uh, yes. You again. Hmm? Me? Oh, uh, you, you are all, all too kind. I really uh, don't deserve this honor. We think you do, and I say that from the bottom. Of my heart and with an emotion not easily put into words, I am sure you share this feeling too, don't you, Miss Ames? Uh, yes. And, and now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Delaney has a little memento for Bobo. This part of the broadcast was not rehearsed, and Bobo is in for a surprise. Mr. Delaney? Bobo, on behalf of Worldwide Studios, I hereby present you with a duplicate of Poogie's own diamond-studded collar. Go ahead, take it. Also, a charter membership in Poogie's fan club, carrying with it the title of Honorary Dog. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bobo is overcome. Oh, I wish you could all see his face. Won't you say a few words, Bobo? Yeah. What can a man say when he's just been made an honorary dog? <laughs> you know, someone once told me I'd wind up with a diamond-studded dog collar if I didn't watch out, and boy, how right he was. Uh, 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 Bobo, what kind of a story are you writing for Poogie? You're asking me? A guy who can't even knock out an obituary? Ha, ha, ha! I'm getting out of this setup here, Mr. Delaney. Take back your dog collar. Just a moment, young man. Out of my way, Delaney. Let me tell you. I said, get out of my way. No. <laughs> oh, exclusive. <laughs> Bobo Biltmore just KO'd Al Delaney, producer of Heading West, starring Lana Dupre, who has never looked lovelier. Use Creelo every single day, because Creelo creels the Creelo way. Other Creelers creel too slow, so I spark K-R-E-L-O. K. R E L. Bobo, Bobo, wait. Now it's 
say it's no use, Jenny. I've made up what little mind I have left. But where are you going? I'm going to try and get my job back. Jenny, listen, I know there are daffy people in every business, but I prefer my own brand. Boogie, you ask him to stay. <laughs> I'll get down, you big ox. Get away from me. What do you think, Daily News? I, I want to talk to Mr. Robard. Boogie, will you get down? Robard speaking. Hello, Mr. Robard. Who's this? Uh, uh, shorty, Mr. Robard. Keep away from me, you big ox. What? Not you, Chief. Mr. Robard, listen, I, I don't I don't want to play games with you. Stop licking my neck. Have you gone completely mad, Mr. Bell? Oh, Chief, listen, please. Not now, Mr. Bell, I'm busy. But, but you've got to listen. Now, wait a moment, Mr. Bell. There's something you may be able to do for me. What? I'm trying to locate a movie writer named Billings, or Billingsby, or Bowley, or Biltmore. Nobody seems to know exactly what his name is. But, but, but Biltmore? Yeah, during a broadcast a moment ago, he went berserk and made some news, but we can't locate him for an interview. Do you know him? No, I, I never heard of him, Chief. Never heard of then him. Then you're wasting my time. Oh, hold on a second, Mr. Robot. Poogie, you're so good. Listen, if you don't leave me alone, I'm warning you, Poogie. I'm gonna... Hello, Chief, listen. Yeah? If I give you a real scoop, I mean a real one. You forget about the story I wrote and the money I owe you and let me come back to work? If it's a real scoop, yes. Mr. Robot, it's something every editor dreams of putting on his front page. The perfect story. I'm listening. Just give me a second. <laughs> ah, did you hear that, Chief? That was the scoop. Man bites dog. <laughs> Mickey Rooney returns in Shorty Bell, a novel for radio. Tonight's script was written by Walter Newman with music conceived and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Shorty Bell is produced and directed by William N. Robeson, and tonight featured John Hoyt as Robard. Be with us again next Sunday night when Mickey Rooney stars as Shorty Bell. Good night, Mom. Mickey Rooney appears by arrangement with Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of Irving Berlin's Technicolor Easter Parade. Starring Judy Garland and Fred Astaire. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.